And the good news is now we've mentioned Laan, which means we can use her image in the YouTube picture because our listens on YouTube go way up when she's in the picture. There we go. Mm-hmm. Nice little, nice little fan service moment for mm-hmm. the other. Exactly. In the crew lounge, Captain Pike was deep into reviewing the case notes when he had an unexpected encounter with Captain Battelle. Both officers were actually aware that Pike's name was conspicuously absent from the defense's witness list. Pike, with his signature charm, reminded Battelle that he had known Una longer than anyone on the ship. He recalled their meeting at the Academy, where he had delivered an inspiring speech, there's a shocker, about a test mission mishap. Una, never one to hold back, had approached him afterward to point out his re-entry blunder. Pike, taking a page from his own advice, had told her that every good captain needed a first officer willing to speak up. Battelle, not one to miss a beat, brought up their shared history and the fact that she had told Una the same thing before transitioning into professional mode. She warned Pike about the potential consequences of testifying. Pike could practically hear her saying, no inspiring speeches today. She emphasized that his testimony could lead to charges of conspiracy and jeopardize not only his career but the entire crew's well-being. Pike, ever the pragmatist, was left with little choice but to heed her warning and let others do the talking. In another corner of the ship, Ortegas and Dr. Ambinga found themselves having a bit of of fun at the expense of a rather tense encounter between Spock and Admiral Pasalk. Ortegas playfully reenacted their conversation as if they were emotionless Vulcans, while Ambinga, who had a taste of Vulcan culture, couldn't help but appreciate the underlying tension. When Spock finally approached them, he offered a full apology for his outburst, acknowledging that Pasak had a unique talent for bringing out the worst in him. As Spock departed, Ortegas and Mbinga struggled to maintain their composure and not burst into laughter. I actually really like that scene. I love everything that they did with Spock this season. And yeah. really last season, too, especially the episodes with him and T'Pring were really good. And I, I just poking fun, but also kind of keeping the same spirit that Leonard Nimoy brought to the character. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the actress portrayal, but this whole thing where Ortegas was just like, you know, mimicking what she thought the conversation was like, and then being is like, ah, you don't see the body language that I do. They hate each other. I thought that was really kind of an interesting and fun, fun little way to play on Vulcans in public, you know? Yeah. I wish they would have done a little bit more between those two with this episode, though. I think there could have been a couple more interesting conversations that we hear instead of just seeing from afar. Yeah. Yeah, we could. And and maybe they still will. Maybe they'll keep that guy around as an admiral in the future, you know? Oh, yeah. As a bad guy, he was great. I'd love to see him again. Yeah. On the bridge, Laon sought the assistance of Uhura on a rather unconventional mission. She asked for any communications related to Una from the past six months, including all shipwide personal logs. Uhura, well-versed in Starfleet regulations, was quick to point out that personal logs were sealed unless expressly ordered to be opened by Starfleet command. Laon tried to assert her authority, but Uhura stood, stood firm, recognizing that following an illegal order could spell trouble for both of them. She made it clear that it wasn't what Una would want. Uhura, I'd rather not find myself in a Klingon prison, thank you. Let's stick to the prime directive of following the rules. Okay, that's not an actual quote. Chat GPT came up with that one. (laughs) So you go to Klingon prison for breaking the prime directive, and the prime directive is now rules. Yes, yeah. Someone should remind uh, now Lieutenant Jim Kirk about that one real quick. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, boy. All right, act two. The scene was set on the USS Enterprise where Admiral Javis flanked by the esteemed Tellarite Space Command representative Zeus, wait, Zeus Talagol, and the Vulcan Starfleet Commander Chiv, took the reins of the Tribunal. With precision worthy of a Vulcan, Javis turned to Una and inquired if she consented to Captain Battelle's appointment as the prosecuting officer. Una, with an air of resignation, gave her consent. The charges were then read aloud, formally accusing Una of violating Starfleet's code regarding permanent DNA modification, submitting falsified information to Starfleet, and two counts of sedition. Una, summoning her inner Vulcan, pleaded not guilty. Now I have to point out real quick Mm -hmm. that ChatGPT did get it wrong. It was not on the Enterprise. It was on Earth. 
the scene was set on the, oh yeah, see, okay, you're right. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't even paying attention to that part. Yeah, they are trying to say it's still on the Enterprise and it is not. Uh, okay, well, that's, that's one major negative right there. <laughs> 